All right, the Veterans Committee making its decision this coming Monday. It's the Golden Era ballot, Hall of Fame candidates from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And in this era, some very compelling cases for some Cooperstown justice. Look at that, we spare no expense. Today we state the case for Dick Allen. First of all, let this sink in. Dick Allen is one of the top 20 hitters in the history of baseball. That's not my opinion. It's a quantifiable measurement. Playing in one of the lowest run scoring periods of the game, his adjusted numbers make him tied for 13th in OPS plus in the live ball era. 19th all time if you want to go back to the 1800s. OPS plus is park adjusted, league adjusted, run scoring environment adjusted. It's not the be all and end all, but it's a decent measurement of hitting. And Allen is on par with Willie Mays and just above Hank Aaron. Now, Mays and Aaron have over 5,000 more plate appearances. I'm not saying Dick Allen was better, but at bat for at bat, Dick Allen is comparable to some of the best hitters ever. It's a good place to be. In his 11 seasons from 1964 to 1974, realize he is in the heart of the dead ball era. National League mostly facing the peak of the Sandy Koufax, Bob Gibson era of run prevention. And yet his slash line is sensational in any time period of baseball. 299 batting average, 386 on base, 554 slugging. A 554 slugging percentage in the late 60s. Now, he did in that time period miss a lot of time. In five of those 11 seasons, he played fewer than 130 games, so he was not durable, and that counts against him. But, come on, three times Allen was the league leader in OPS+. Plus. Six times he was top three. So for six different seasons, Dick Allen was just about the best hitter in the league. And when you add it all up over the same 11-year period, he's one of the greats. Between 1964 and 1974, admittedly, his peak, so it plays to his strength. But in that time period, the number one hitter in the game, that's number one in OPS+, plus, number six overall in war, and number one in offensive war. This, these are your offensive war leaders right now. We can't list all all of them, but here are the best offensive players of that time period. Dick Allen, Hank Aaron, Frank Robinson, Carl Yastrzemski, Joe Morgan. All those stars, and Dick Allen is above them offensively, hitting and base running. You can get into storytelling. You can try to figure out if any of these guys, was he a good teammate, was he a bad teammate, but analytically, looking at the production, and that's all I'm looking at here, Dick Allen is a Hall of Fame level player, Dave Sims, easily. I don't get why he wouldn't go in. It's an emotional call for me because I loved the guy growing up in Philly. I wore number 15 in high school because of Dick Allen. I've talked to a lot of his peers over the course of time in my career, and they, they get they, their eyes just blow up they, with all these great stories about Allen, whether he was sober or not sober, what he did uh, coming back from the track or not. The guy was a prodigious hitter, uh, unbelievable power to right center field for a right-hand hitter. He was a good third baseman early on. Pat Corrales told me about them being back-to-back -back fighting their way out of situations in Little Rock, Arkansas, 1961-62, when you didn't have too many. He says, I got a, we had a black guy and I had a Chicano guy and we're in Little Rock, Arkansas. He's my brother. Mike Shannon said the same thing. I said to Mike Shannon one time in his restaurant, I said, I'm from Philly. Dick Allen's my favorite, uh, one of my favorite players after Mays. And Shannon says, hey, honey, get this guy whatever he wants, okay? <laughs> That's, all say, yeah. That's all you got to say. That's all you got to say. But I have immeasurable respect for what Dick Allen did. I saw what he did in a tough situation in Philly with a manager, Dick, uh, with uh, Gene Mock, who, uh, let's face it, the record in Philly, and I, I can say this, and I know some of these people, the record in Philly with black players in that time had not improved greatly since 47 when Jackie came in. And for him to put up the numbers that he did, forget, he's in. I'm so, sorry. That's that's I don't know if I'm buying the narrative either, given the time period of a guy, of a strong black guy playing in Philadelphia during that time with immense racism and hatred around him, and who knows what was written about him. I know this, though. Take a look. You know his season this year is like a mic his season for 11, an 11-year 11 period, talking 1964 to 1974, wow. very comparable to what Mike Trout did this year. OPS Plus, th there's, oh, it's almost identical because, again, the numbers don't blow you away because he's playing in the late 60s and putting up a 550 slugging percentage. So like imagine. You said, the numbers against the Koufax, that era of the Drysdale, Gibson, yeah. Marischal, Bob Veal. I mean, he's playing against some unbelievable pitchers. All right, so who do we like off that ballot? Again, Dick Allen and Minnie Minoso for me. I'm giving them the solid votes. Who would we like on that ballot? Well, after the Allen argument, I'm ready to pack it up and give up and go home. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to say something? Louis Tian, I, I, and I agree. I, I concede this is partly an emotional decision. Just uh, the color he brought to the game with the delivery, the personality. But the numbers are also very strong. If you look at the similarity scores on BaseballReference.com, we're talking Catfish Hunter, Jim Bunning, Don Drysdale, other guys in the Hall of Fame already.
Who do you like, Mike? For me, you speak emotionally. My first big league game ever in Yankee Stadium, we had a broken bat single, and Jim Cott came up to me after the game. He was covering the game, and he goes, Congrats, Mike. Twenty nine ninety nine left. I, was like, well, I, I fell a little short of that, but I was like, what a good guy. And you dive into the numbers of Jim Cott. I know he pitched for 25 years, so the wins and all that, they're a little skewed, but 16 gold gloves, a 3-4 ERA, a tremendous athlete. A lot of times he was second in wins, innings pitch, and what the Cy Young voting would be, two Koufax. And I just think if you look at the whole body of work that he has given the game of baseball, not only as a pitcher and a player, mm -hmm. but as a broadcaster, yeah. he's in. I mean, Dick Allen's in. I'm not yeah, arguing, but right. in addition to. Uh, it's a very good case. I like both of these choices. I like their choices as well. Uh, you can make a really good case with Louis Tion. Take a look at all the guys that are on the ballot because uh, Ken Boyer deserves consideration as very well. Good uh, Bob Housem, who's an executive with the Cincinnati Reds. Gil Hodges, I know, has a lot of fans out there still between his days with, the, you know, part of the lore of the Brooklyn Dodgers, manager of the Mets, Tony Oliva, Billy Pierce. Maury Wills as well. Right, a lot of very good candidates. Uh, it's just, you know, Minnie Minoso, I think if, if it was more, uh, if he was playing now, we would appreciate his walk rate, his speed, his defense, things that we're valuing and quantifying a little bit better. Many at 298, these days. too. Yeah, no. He's a better hitter than I thought he was. I didn't see him. I've always heard a lot about him. I thought that 298 batting average for, for that time was really good. With plate selection, with a bit of power, with fielding, and by the time he broke in again, he probably lost two, three years. And then Easily. Lose it because he was black, right? And coming in, playing Cuba, coming and comes Cuba, in, right. right, and didn't get to play right away. Had he been white, he would have jumped in, he would have had two extra years on all of that. Let me just say, don't diminish the fact uh, of what the black players and the Latin players had to go through during that time that for them to put up the numbers they had to put up with right. with the social uh, things that were going through that's a lot of pressure the game's tough enough mm -hmm. so now you're adding that on top of it I mean you're walking through the park and you're getting every called everything in the book and you still got to go out there and perform don't diminish the fact oh. that these guys put up those kind of numbers man that's that's good stuff